One of the viewers of the Bequam YouTube channel asked if it were possible to add a sequence number to the row headers in a crosstab report. And it is. I wrote a small Java class that I integrate into iReport and as I'm spitting out the value of year for this row header, I add a text field expression that's going to evaluate and increment that counter class that I wrote. To start off, I have to make that counter class available to iReport Designer. I've packaged my special class into a jar called counter.jar. And counter.jar is in this path here, JasperSoft Live. And so now all of the classes in that jar file can be called by my JasperSoft report. The next thing that I do is in the report inspector as a top level property, I define an import. And the class counter is put in the package called counter with a lowercase c. Next, I dig into the subreport itself and I drag a text field onto the row header, make it about a third of the size, and in the text field, I call counter, get count, and increment. And this is going to return a variable called count, but it's also going to increment it after the fact. And that makes the next value available for the next time this expression is called, which will be on the next row. Preview the report. And you can see that there's a 1, 2, 3 next to it. This is the Eclipse Indigo IDE. And you're looking at a class called counter.java. And this 15-line class is a variable called count, which starts at 1 and several methods for manipulating that variable, and two for returning the variable's value. Now the second one is of interest in iReport because we're limited in iReport in a lot of cases to expressions, and that means that we can't write lines that manipulate objects and create objects, but rather we need to do it all in one single line of Java code. So this sort of static pattern is, is a good one for, for that because you can have a one-liner uh, like we saw in iReport, which, which is used to both get the count value and increment it. The, when you're working with Java in iReport, you've got to be conscious of the versions because often your Eclipse version is going to differ from what's provided by iReport. And here I've got a compliance level set to 1.6. Now if I had this set to 1.7, you would have an incompatibility. I would be producing code that is not compatible with that current version of, of iReport. However, if I take this code and just toggle this to 1.6 or even 1.5 or 1.4, uh, then it'll be compatible with older versions of, of iReport. So if you see anything in these examples that hints to a bad version, it's probably because you're compiling a, and producing a Java class that's not of the same version. Uh, there is backward compatibility such that if you have the later version, say a 1.6 toolkit, you can certainly read in the 1.3s and 1.4s. So that's Java compatibility. Once you have that set in, setting ironed out, you can create a class like this. Here's a simple 15-line class. And I can export that class as a jar file. And note the jar file destination. So the single class gets compiled and put into this jar file. So looking back on the report here, you see that there is a evaluation made as this text field is rendered. And so as every row is spit out, this value is retrieved and the value is incremented. There's all kinds of ways you can add to this counter. If you had a more complex report, you might want to reset the counter at key points in your report. But for the requirement that was put to me by the viewer, I think this meets what they're looking for.